The functions that we add to our calculator are found under the Info drop-down menu, Immediate Mode, CAS, Variables. Here we will click on Finite Math. The free and white do not have finance options, so what we have done is add these four functions to our calculator. Shown over here in our calculator is the simple interest formula and the compound interest formula, which we have already added. We will now add the last two. Double click on Loan, Shift click, right click, copy, go over to our calculator, Control V, press Enter. Do the same process for IRA. Double click IRA, shift click, right click to copy, move over to our calculator, control V, press enter. Looking at our calculator, we can see that these formulas are quite complex. We will use OneNote to discuss these formulas and their applications. One last thing. Let's press the var command, the CAS button, hit the program button, and we see that we have compound interest, IRA, loan, and simple interest all added to our calculator. In this video on compound interest, we're going to explore the effect of different periods. We will be using OneNote and the HP Prime Calculator and Microsoft Word. The formulas were entered by using Microsoft Word Equation Editor and cutting and pasting them. The tables here were made by using OneNote. The graphic here was made by using the calculator Num function and the other graphic was made by using the calculator Plot function. Looking at our OneNote screen, the calculator function numeric view stands out because it has an entry called not a number. The other entries that are kind of interesting to us is two, which is semi-annual, four, which is quarterly, and 12, which is monthly. If we look at these entries and we look at our entries rounded in our table, we see that they are identical. Let's look at how we got the table. If we go to our shift num key, we can set up the parameters for the table. So we went from negative four with a step of two. If we then hit the num button, we see that we end up with the same table that we have here. Then use the calculator edit screen capture, copy, and then paste it into our OneNote. Let's look at the calculator, not a number entry. What we have over here is a limit as X approaches zero from the right for the future value. And we find that the answer is equal to 1000. So what we're doing here is we're gonna use a little black box part of our calculator. We don't know exactly how limits work, but we'll let the calculator do the work for us. So let's hit the CAS function and take a look at these examples of limits. We might mention that using black boxes could get us in trouble because if we don't know what's going on and we rely on the calculator to come with the answer, it may come up with an answer that is incorrect. We know from having taught the Applied Calculus and the Engineering Calculus class, that one approach to limits is to just substitute the value in. And that works fine for these three entries. When we're doing the first entry, what we normally try to do is we have division by zero and raised to a zero power. This creates a problem for us. To come up with an equivalent form at the present time, I do not see how to do this. So we'll just rely on the calculator. So putting this into the calculator, it came up with 1,000, came up with 1,400, 
came up with 1480 and 1485. As we can see, the values um, are approaching 1000 as we go down. What we did on the calculator is change the M in this formula over to X. If we hit the SYMB button, we see that we have the formula put in as F1. So that's where the limits got F1. We might as well take a quick look at the plot while we're here. So we'll hit plot. And we can see that this plot is very similar to our plot down here. So as the period gets to be more frequent, the function levels off. The period is, is less, then we don't make as much money. We use the go to 12 to set the value to this particular functional value. And we use the plot. So if we go in here to the plot settings, we set the parameters to be minus one to 40, 1400 to 1500, X tits five, Y tick 1000. We also made sure that the label function was set. Returning to this page, let's clear out our, our limits and work the one entry that was not shown over here, which was daily. We will press our var key, two for program, one for compound interest, press the parentheses. We want to figure out the future value, so we're going to put in x, comma, the amount of money we have is 1000 comma the interest rate is 4% point zero four comma compounded daily 365 comma and we want to do this for 10 years and we press enter this is how we came up with this entry in the table. A low amount at a fairly low interest rate over 10 years, there wasn't that much difference between annual and daily. We now return to our compound interest formula calculation that we did for an annuity. We compared an annuity for 10 years and then invested that amount of money which was $83,060.94 for 37 years in compound interest. We can see by looking at this table that it makes quite a bit of difference. Clearing our calculator and entering in IRA and compound interest for annual, semi-annual, quarterly, monthly, and daily, we came up with these values over here. Then if we take this amount and the, the monthly amount and add them together, our total retirement turns out to be from the time we're 18 to 65 to be $921,780.66. For our last step, let's take a look at how we came up with this graph. So going to our plot settings, going from minus five to 40 for our X range, from 750,000 to 850,000 for our Y range, for the tick for X five and the tick for Y 10,000. We might mention that this tick of 10,000, so even though this graph appears to be flat, like the graph up here, since the amount is 10,000, it amounts to quite a bit of difference in money for us in this situation. So then we'll hit our plot key and we set this up with the go to function under menu and came back to menu for 12. So we ended up with the same answer that we have here. This ends our lesson on compound interest um, periodic effect.